<laughs> Buckethead, yeah. so Buckethead. This whole thing started when Idubs came out to film a documentary about you, where he was essentially in a roundabout way trying to punk you, right? Yeah. Show you as yeah. washed, show you as a washed up comedian or something along those lines, right? Big time. But when that ended, you guys were seemingly on decent terms, right? Yeah, I, I felt even though he, I knew he, I knew he came out to try to clown me, but um, <clears throat> the uh, exposure that I got from that, I got a pretty serious boost to my career, to which I'm indebted to him uh, for, you know. And um, I'm not really a, uh, I'll hold, there are some grudges that I'll hold, but like uh, I'm not gonna hold a, hold a grudge with Idubs. Um, so I kind of felt like you know he had, he had helped me out, and we made some good content. We made a, uh, we made two really funny documentaries um you know his little shit backfired but uh i was uh, i was perf perfectly happy to uh you know do whatever um yeah so this brings us to creator clash one where you were banned at the last minute from entering the event did we ever get a reason as to why you were banned from the event no no uh i'm pretty sure it was just uh due to butthurt yeah, I heard some rumblings of they thought you were going to sabotage it. Yeah, I was I was banned from the first event because they had no I could have done uh I could have snuck in there and headbutted someone. Whatever stupid stupid ass uh, fake reason was why I was banned, but it was just cuz they were he was pissed off about the doc, uh, not not winning in the documentary. And I don't know if I'm misremembering this, but didn't he say something about Dr. Mike didn't want to be on a card that had anything to do with you? Yeah, he said the, that was the big reason that he gave when he was. I think he was talking to Keemstar, doing a, doing some media thing. He said, uh, uh, "Doctor Mike would never be on a card if I was if I was there." And then I, by chance, because Doctor Mike's such a big fucking uh, <clears throat> you know clean celebrity. Yeah, yeah. And then just by chance last year, by the grace of God, I ran into Doctor Mike outside of the event and asked him oh, yeah. about you. And he oh, didn't. Yeah. And, he, and he seemed to wish you well. He didn't seem to yeah. really entirely know who you were. And it and seemed first, yeah, first of all didn't know who I was, and second of all he wished me uh, that he wished I would have a great day, or whatever. So, so it seems Ian completely made that up out of thin air. Yeah, I know some of these questions are a bit redundant, but after going to the event and talking to everyone, I'm just trying to get the story straight as to like what the hell exactly happened here. We got to get it straightened out here. I think it's important that we. Uh get the correct version of truth down on paper what happened what is idubs doing yeah what is this little man up to so obviously you trained me for my fight we got the w team providence three and oh how did yeah, the man. training with froggy fresh uh come to fruition uh froggy just hit me up and um <clears throat> you know he said uh He's a, he's a he's a really cool guy. He comes across. Uh, he's got a really easygoing way about him. Like right off the bat, I think it's a a Florida Florida thing maybe. Um, but I just I just liked him right away. And um, he uh, came out for a week. We did our little workouts. You know, we spent the spent the week together and had a, a really pretty good time. Very productive in my opinion. Um, and I think he, I think Froggy looked really good. Uh, he's uh, you know, like a natural natural athlete, he's a very athletic person, so he was able to keep up with all the all the training uh, without a without a problem. And so, then he went he went back uh, went back home and was canceled from the uh, from the fight that he'd been training for for nine months or eight months or whatever it was. Yeah, because I just did a, an interview uh, with Froggy Fresh right before this interview, and it seems a little bit confusing how he went from him training with you to, to getting banned. So he was there with you. He got a call from Ian uh, being yeah. very odd and sketchy about like, you know, what's going on on Twitter. I saw you're in Providence and Sam's retweeting you. And then yeah, I think the first, the first thing I, uh, Ian said, so <clears throat> here's the thing. These, um, the, a fight, a fight is like, ex uh, as you know, extremely serious. It's not like a, it's, it's fucking not the thing that people, think it is where it's like yeah we can just put on some gloves and go at it and see what happens like that's not that's not it it's uh like get, you know the, the potential to get your head rocked and get some serious damage done to you um and you're, you're in this like uh it's you, you saw this in creator clash one because most of the, the people in creator clash one 
didn't prepare properly and hadn't sparred. So like Matt, whatever, Matt that, kid that, that kid that came back and did that pathetic uh, joke rendering of the national anthem and fucking kissing a guy, <laughs> which is just, that's, if you, if, if, uh, if an old, an old guy, an old bald guy ruins you and totally disgraces you in a fight, and just stomps all over you and mashes your testicles into the mat and humiliates you forever, then yeah, you, you have to double. The only choice you have, if, you're, if you have a, some type of influence or career, some type of comedy, comedy career, the only choice you have that Matt Walsh was willing to take the time to go through is to, is to double down on the I'm gay uh, and... Um, <laughs> Start, start making music videos in, in purple bathtubs and doing just the pathetic, pathetic side antic shit. <clears throat> Everybody knows this from high school. If you can't beat up the jocks and you get brutally harassed, what are you going to do? You have to double down on the, hey, I'm a clown. I'm a clown. That shit. It's just that, but at age 30 now. Um, well, remember, Sam, uh, Matt Watson, his dad's friend, he was doing him a favor. He was doing him a friendly they favor. Friends. They were really good friends, which is why, you know, anytime, like me me and my good friends, what I do is I brutalize them uh, in front of millions of people. And then celebrate. Uh-huh. Then gleefully celebrate. And then, I, and then I celebrate like a manic freak. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't celebrate that. I wouldn't celebrate that hard if I beat Hassan Piker. I wouldn't celebrate that hard if I was the fucking heavyweight champion of the world the look on his face on dad's face yeah doing just the corniest Im- improv actor shit like that fuck me man it's insane. good nice friend what a good friend and yeah. that's what the um the issue with the creator clash thing is is it's it's good it's let's get some friends together put on some gloves and see what happens and it's fun everybody's gonna have fun these pe- these people are not having fun like that, um, that bitch, uh, what's her name? The, the Dungeons and Dragons chick that came out in the Satan costume and got molly by a little girl. They lost to Yodeling got, Haley? Yeah, Yodeling Haley, a, a young little girl, beat this old lady's ass. Uh, it, it just it made her look like a bus stop crackhead. They should have stopped that earlier as well. That, that redheaded, uh, chick looked looked like a bus stop crackhead um like that's the type of shit that that's what happens if when you uh, oh this is the the reason i got down this point this 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 thing here these are not these are not fun little insignificant throwaway things that we do for fun this changes your life if you if you lose in a brutal fashion that changes your life matt watson his life has been completely altered from the course that it would have taken because of the that beating that dad put on him that's that's how it is. That's what happens if you get brutalized in front of millions of people. It doesn't matter how much you are laughing about it or being. Hey, I'm a big. I'm a good sport, and we're just here for charity, guys. No, you just got <clears throat> steamrolled in front of everybody that would ever have an interest in watching you, and that's going to be on the computer forever for your kids to look at. You know what I mean? Like this is not, and and that's they know they know that too. They're just pretending. The people that are like, yeah, it's it's all good. Bloody mouth, broken nose, busted eye. Yeah, it's all good. We're good now. That's pretend. That's all pretend. Um, and so if you're going to invite somebody to do this, like when I'm when I trained you, I was like my mindset was just and I'm not saying I'm, I'm a great coach or something, but my mindset was like I, I have to 100 percent. I got to make sure that Brandon comes out of this with his head intact with a win, <clears throat> not looking like a jackass. Like, this is the most important thing in the world. This person has, like, put their health in my hands. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, we, we weren't joking around. You can see, I mean, there's, like, three videos of us training. I'm not, and, and I'm not I wasn't, joking wasn't at all. Fun, man. We, were not, we were not having fun. No. You were, you were throwing up. We were both just sweating, just working. Wake up, work. It was, it was, a, it was a, you know, that kind of time. There, were no, there was no laughing. There was no content. Create. We're making some great content together. We weren't like, uh, we should do a podcast and just have a blast and go do go-kart. Like, no, none of that. Um, so iDubs is bringing these, is bringing these, Anissa is bringing these people together who know nothing about fighting. They don't understand what it's, they don't understand what it's like to get punched in the face. Chris Reagan, 
going up against a black dude that's like uh, half a foot taller than him. That's fucking nuts. <laughs> See, I, that's, I, want, that's nuts. I want to ask about that. So before we get there, um... but the point the point being, they left they left Froggy Fresh out. Uh, you know, they left him out to dry. They left they they did not communicate with him. They were not helping him like put together training. They were not checking in on him to make sure that shit was going well. There was just radio silence from the time that they got him signed to the time that he came here. It was just radio silence, and that's completely. Uh, if, if someone's if someone's career, uh, brain health, etc., are on the line, none of, none of that's acceptable. If I was putting together a fight promotion of any of any sort, <clears throat> I would be checking in at least weekly, like make sure that this make sure this person's like uh, you know got the right coach, has a game plan, knows what they're getting into, has done sparring, etc. Um, but uh, there was there was none of that. And then when Froggy Fresh came here and tweeted about it, he immediately gets a call from iDub saying, how do you know Sam Hyde? First thing is that when he picks up the phone, how do you know Sam Hyde? That's crazy. So do you think that the reason for Froggy Fresh's band was the I'll subscribe to Anissa's OnlyFans if I lose or because he was training with you or an amalgamation of I think both? It, I think it was a mix. He's kind of a he's kind of a shit starter. He's like a floor. He's a Florida guy. You can't. You can't tell someone from Florida not to do something because they'll just keep doing it. like that's that's like uh, it's just not not in the not in the cards. You take a, you take some guy from Florida, you say, hey, can you chill out and not do that? It's just they're going to do the opposite. So I think um, Fro I think Froggy was starting to put it together that he's that he had been kind of neglected by these people. He was, you know, uh, he was probably probably pissed off at having not having. Um, any sort of communication or, or lifeline in this in this very frankly very scary process towards the end of it and uh yeah i would i would imagine that's why i didn't I haven't talked to him about it but i would imagine that's why he made the um only fans joke but it's a joke and uh she's not ashamed of her only fans so what's there to be ashamed of he didn't say that she's a a, a succubus with a, a, a foot wide hole that uh <clears throat> you know, she's, he didn't say anything about stretching her hold. He just said he was going to subscribe to her OnlyFans. Sam, if I lose my next fight, I'm going to sign up for a season pass to Fish Tank Live. Oh, that's a low, that's a low blow, Brandon. <laughs> you shouldn't subscribe to the thing that I'm not ashamed of, that I make money from. I spoke with an entire group of people outside of Crater Clash that were in Garfield outfits, <gasps> and they were banned yeah. from the event for wearing masks, and they were told by security it was because they were afraid you were going to sneak in so they're they're banning right. they're banning five foot two hundred twenty five pound people uh with masks on because yeah. you could be sam hyde well you know what's crazy in addition to pictures of me they had um security had pictures of jet and julian at the venue that's true that's true yeah which that's is like julian julian's never said anything like i think i mean jet has like spicy twitter or whatever but julian has said nothing but nice things to I dubs. He's never insulted him. He's never said any any one sideways thing about anybody, and he's and it's just it's just really funny uh, how how petty how petty they get. Well, Anissa ban uh, blocked me on Twitter, and I was thinking like, well, what have I done? What have I said? Yeah. And also, we made these signs that said "Free Froggy Fresh." Froggy did nothing wrong, and yeah. they they made their way down to the part where the fighters walk out, and Rusty Cage tweeted out a photo of the posters and said, "Uh oh," at the yeah. after party. Anissa came up to him and said, Rusty, I just want to let you know that tweet you made really uncool. Yeah, that seems like a major violation. That seems like something that's really uncool. Yeah, I got an interview with Rusty about it. It's pretty, uh, pretty insane. So now that brings us people, a lot of people are getting hurt because of that. A lot of people getting hurt because of that. It's very uncool. Mm -mm. So that brings us to the opponent they chose to replace Froggy Fresh. I know. Yeah, they, no, that's actually that actually is a cool move. <laughs> they had, so if, I took, so they, if I took a picture, if I took a picture of a sign that said "Froggy Fresh does nothing, did nothing wrong," that's kind of a, an uncool move. That's not cool, okay? But um, if I'm your if I'm your friend and uh, I give you a few days' notice to go fight a uh, black guy that's uh, way bigger than you, that's actually a cool move. I mean, he was six inches taller. I heard he cut. 13 pounds and still weighed in 
five, six pounds heavier. That is a massive, massive weight difference. Well, that's a cool move. That's what you do when you care about your friends. You know, these people, they're just good people. They're salt of the earth people. They're the, they're the best people. They're the best people. You know, and I would, the fuck, I, I don't think I would even do that. If, if I, if I uh, had somebody that I, like, didn't like set, setting them up to fail in a uh, mismatched fight, I don't even know if I would have the stomach to do that, man. Yeah, it was it, it it was it was nightmarish to see. So uh, I I have like a few more questions here. How did you feel about Creator Clash as a whole? I think it's I think it's great. I like the um, I like the controlled car car wreck aspect to it. Um, this this year, I don't know if you noticed, but the ring didn't have an apron. Did you see that? Yeah. So the the and this uh, this sounds like a small point to somebody that's not that hasn't fought in a in a ring before, but. When you get up against the ropes, you you expect there to be about a foot of like backsplash for your for your feet to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's a, there's a border a border around the ring so that when you're backed up against the ropes, you're not fucking slipping off slipping out of the ring. I don't know if you saw Harley Harley misstepped. He didn't even misstep. He just stepped. He thought there was going to be an apron there where where there is in every like regulation boxing ring, and he he slipped. Did you see that? Yeah. Fell right into the ring. Even to, I mean, uh, he got thrown out of thrown out of the ring too. But um, there were a few times where he went to he went to step, and there was nothing there for him to step on. And that's that sounds like a small point, uh, but if you ever if you ever fought and you have stepped somewhere and thought that there was going to be something there to support you and there wasn't, you know that that's not a small point. Um, even Tony Jeffries was saying that like the ring was uh, the ring is not made to regulation. Um, so it's just. I love Iron Clash because it's a fucked up mess, and I want to see people get hurt. And um, I like I like when uh, extremely low mid tier nothing content creators um, get abused for not enough money and uh, uh, get in get in mismatched fights and get their uh, brains boggled. I think it's uh, it's funny. I like seeing um, old women like the the uh, Dungeons and Dragons lady get uh, her ass beat. I love that. So I'm a I'm a big fan. And if you could say anything to Idubs about this froggy fresh banning situation, what would you say to him? Uh, stop being a silly billy and get on your redemption arc ASAP. People are people people like seeing you lose because you suck, but it's getting tiresome, it's getting worn out, so now it's time to win. But you have to get all the tattoos lasered off and you have to ditch Yoko Ono. What would you say to Anissa if you could say anything to this? Because I'm I'm sure at this point she's actually going to be watching this. I would use her native tongue. I wouldn't use English. I would say. And is there a message you want to give to uh, Froggy and Fresh? I, and then I would enter her hole, which is a portal to the nether, uh, the nether realm of hell. And I would go in and get my gold treasure back, and I would come back to the Earth realm. <laughs> You'd enter her portal hole to hell. Yeah. And Which is, it's her pussy, Brandon. It's oh, it's her pussy. It's her pussy. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Well, I appreciate your time, Sam. Is there oh, anything oh, else oh, no. you want to say for the video to the people out there? Anything you want to promote? Um, just make sure you're not spending too much time on the computer. Ladies and gentlemen, try to get some exercise. Once a day, you have to do it. Movement is medicine. Your brain and your body are not two separate things. They're connected. There are some problems you cannot think your way out of. There are some anxieties, neuroses, circular thinking, <clears throat> logic traps, etc. There are some mental health problems that you cannot think your way out of. You have to use your body to get out of it. So go for a walk, get some sun, do something, stop being... Fat. Stop being lazy. You can be a little bit fat. I'm a little bit fat, but uh, don't stop being lazy. It's just you know, it's not going to help you. We gotta we gotta work hard here.